Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I have a new friend today, and his name is Bill Free, of which I teased him about that name because it's just so easy and it's so wonderful. It's like born free is Bill. And you are from, you had mentioned all over the United States. You started somewhere. Where did you, where were you raised? I grew up um, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, that's beautiful. Uh, until, you know, I was maybe 10 years old and then moved to Texas with my family. Yeah. Uh, right outside of Dallas. And I spent uh, my teenage years and early 20s in Texas. And then I moved to Florida. You keep going down or I over. Keep going, right, <laughs> right. And I spent about 25, 27 years in Florida. Really? Before moving to New England, where I live now. Okay. Yeah. Well, how do you like up here? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. And you are an entrepreneur. You are a student teacher, a spiritual disciple, shall we say. Mm -hmm. Of course, people who come on Awaken the Dream always have a special mission or a niche. And I get so excited because I get to find out what yours is. And I always want to take you back a little bit to, were you raised in a traditional family? Um, because if you are doing some work on the spiritual field in the new age, more or less. Did you jump into this from somewhere else? Was there a launch? Well, um, actually, I have been uh, on my own since about 14 years old. Really? And didn't have a religious, uh, you know, we would go to church before those, uh, before uh, 14, we would go to church once a year or so. Once a year. <laughs> uh, you know, for Christmas sure. or, you know, something special. There's a term for that. <laughs> <laughs> we would go once a year. And Christmas, then, Chris, a Christmas Christian. <laughs> right. I was a Christmas Christian. Uh, I, I moved out of the house at 14 and I lived on my own until, uh, I mean, I, I started a, a family early on. I had a, a child when I was about 23 years old and okay. uh, started a business and then... Um, in my 20s, I became, I found Christianity. You did. I became a born-again Christian. You, I thought that was the, oh. that was the path. That was, that was where I, I, I missed something. Yeah. I, I felt that, oh, Christianity is it. Jesus is it. Sure. And so I really jumped in with both feet. I uh, found, <clears throat> I found uh, Jesus uh, to be the answer to all my uh, what, what was missing okay. in my life. And yeah. immediately when I found Jesus, I said, well, if this guy is real, if he really did what it says in the Bible, I want to go see where he went. So I went to Israel. You did? I went right to Bethlehem. I went to <sighs> Jerusalem and I stayed for a couple of weeks. And, and I said, okay, well, the the geography's here. He, you know, he's, this is where he landed, and <laughs> and then I went back to the United States and I practiced uh, Christianity for about 24 years. Well, being born again, I know from knowing. I mean, that's strong. That's just total commitment. And you can tell me the particulars, but it's total commitment, and your life is that. Right. That's what it was. Right. By the way, I have to ask you this funny question. How did you sneak away at 14? <laughs> well, I kind of got like booted. Did you get away. thrown out? I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit. Acting like a redhead. Wild, yeah. <laughs> I was on the wild side and my poor parents couldn't handle me. I'll be So dog they on. needed to get me out of the nest. Uh, well, I'll be. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And well, it, it helped everybody. Well, okay, I'm sure. Yeah. It was a wake-up call maybe for you. To it was very good. I grew up very fast. I'll bet. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you went to Bethlehem, I mean, did you feel inspired because you were near the place of birth? Did you, did, was it commercial at all or was it very authentic? Oh, or? no. I lived, I, huh, I did some radical things. I, I went with no money. And I lived in uh, the village. I lived in Bethlehem for a couple of weeks with people that were perfect strangers that, that I ran into outside the, uh, the tomb. Uh, I ran into a, a family member outside the tomb and, uh, and they, this 
this guy uh, started asking me questions. We went and uh, we talked for a little bit, and he um, sent me by cab to his sister and brother-in-law's house in Bethlehem. And um, I knocked on the door and I said, hi, I'm Bill Free from the United States and I'm a born again Christian and your brother said Sent that, me. <laughs> that you would, uh, you would want to meet me. And I stayed with him for a couple of weeks. Did you really? Yeah. I, I, I went with no money in the last minute. I was at the airport in Miami uh, to head to, to JF, JFK before heading to Tel Aviv. And I thought, I had this like inspiration, I'm just going to go on faith. I'm going to spend all my money in that men's store over there. So I went into the men's store. I spent a thousand bucks cash. So I had no money at all in my pocket or on me. You no credit clothes, cards. Something to wear. I had clothes. I had a suitcase and I had a, a carry-on. And um, and I went with, you know, just I wanted to go on faith. I just had this inspiration. Oh, so you really just didn't want to have any money. I didn't want to have any money. You just went and spent it. I just wanted to, I just wanted to test this okay. that God would take care gotcha. of you. I'm clear now. Yeah, and he did. Could you take all that stuff with you that you bought? Uh, I did. <laughs> I did take it with me. I, had, I bought expensive stuff. I was envisioning <laughs> you with this big lamp <laughs> loading on the plane. Okay, you took so, little things, but yeah. they were expensive. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I get the picture. So you went on faith. You had enough to fly over there, mm -hmm. and then nothing in your pockets. Right, nothing. No money at all. Wow. And when I got, TWA was in business then, and uh, when I got to the ticket counter in Tel Aviv, or I actually got to the luggage, uh, uh, to where you could pick up your luggage, and my luggage didn't make it. Oh. And I went to the ticket counter, and they said, your luggage didn't make it from New York, and where will you be staying? And I said, oh, gosh. I don't know, I'm, <gasps> I'm, I'm going to just hitchhike to Jerusalem and sleep outside where Jesus <gasps> was. And I was just this young guy, just really totally innocent and had no idea, you know, that, I mean, they showed up at the airport, there's machine guns on, and this was a very, uh, this was a very uh, volatile time okay. Okay. in Israel. And so uh, the, uh, it, it wasn't, it was a little bit like people weren't ready for me. Yeah, I, uh, I hear. Bill was really free. Yeah, Bill was very free. <laughs> well, when TWA, when I told them I didn't have any money, I wasn't didn't have a hotel to stay in. They gave me twenty dollars. They did. Yeah, they gave me twenty bucks, and they gave me a TWA um, jacket because they said it would be cold oh. in Jerusalem. And so I took the twenty dollars and the jacket, and I got on a bus, and I'm I went impressed. to I went to Jerusalem. I'm impressed. Yeah. So you ended up staying for a couple of weeks. Now, the the house that you stayed at, were they born again? They were. They were. Yeah, they okay. were practicing Christians. They, I went to church with them okay. in Jerusalem. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it was when you leapt into your faith, was it just coming from the, a dark place to an immediate light? Was it a really 180 degree turnaround for you to claim it and know that this was now who you were? Well, I was, I, I didn't really like uh, Christian stuff too much. I wasn't, I was, you know, I'd gone through the, the hippie culture in okay. the sixties and the early seventies. And <clears throat> I wasn't really into the You're Christian born again stuff. Hippie. I saw Billy Graham, you know, do his thing. And I'd go, I don't know what they're doing. Oh, okay. And so, but, but when I found that I, I needed help. I, I was into the drugs a little bit sure. at a, in those, all those years, 14 to uh, 27 years old so I needed uh, some guidance I needed some new direction yeah. and before I made that decision uh, I remember and I was raising as a single parent I was raising my little daughter oh. uh, at that time and I remember saying God if you're real I need help because I was having a drinking and a drug uh, issues at that time and yeah. and I was asking for help and within two months of that uh, call to the universe, to the to God, as I knew Him then, as I knew uh, God, it, um, which I didn't really know God because I was saying, "If you're real, I need your help." Within two months of that, I was in Israel. I'll be doggone. It was amazing. All right, so now we're still in the born again phase. Yep. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, um, I have all. I was a very um, serious. Um, born again Christian. I went to church 
regularly. You kind of have nights, to be serious, don't Sunday. you? Sunday. Well, if you do, you know, it's a fundamentalist. It was yeah. kind of a fundamentalist. It's uh, like your whole life is wrapped up in yeah. that. But I was, I, was, I was very happy about it because sure. I, the, the moment that I asked Jesus to come into my life, as I knew it then, um, I, I, I never drank again and I never picked up drugs again. I just said, okay, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. It was a place to, to pull me from an, uh, an, a misguided life into a new direction. Into that was a guided really, one. Into a guided life. Yeah. And it was much safer and I really yeah. felt... With rules and regulations and, and ways to behave. And right. Sure. Yeah. It was good for me. That, that's good. It was really good Boot for camp. me. Boot camp. Boot <laughs> camp. Um, it was when I continued to... You know, there's a lot of Bible verses that I just didn't really understand why they weren't happening. I didn't oh. understand where the joy was because I wasn't always feeling joy. Mm -hmm. I didn't, and I saw that Christians have, a, they, they seem to have a lot of turmoil just like everyone else. Yeah. And I had it in my, in my life. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't really plagued with it, but uh, it, it wasn't present. When, when Jesus, the, the one thing that I, that kept tripping me up was when I kept hearing this verse that Jesus said, when he said, the things that I do, you shall do and more. Yeah, greater things than this. Yeah, you greater shall things do. than these things, you yeah, shall do I love more. That and I used to say to my Christian leaders and friends and Pat, I'd say, when are we going to do that? <laughs> when, yeah. When is that going to happen? Good for you. And nobody would ever be able to answer that question. Boy, what a great, great question. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I know that's very uplifting. Yeah. So you knew we, something had to pick up from where Jesus left off. Right. Okay. Right. So. Um, Funny thing happened. I started. Uh, I started just kind of looking around when the internet came. Up, you know, came into full force. I started looking on the internet a little bit, and um, I started seeing these other ideas uh, pop up. and And there was a there was a book that was uh, that was released on the internet that I I I thought I bought it for my ex wife. Um, it was called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. And it was, wow. uh, there was this, um, it was, uh, it was this book that talks about your feelings and it talks about the words that you use and, and different, um, there's a different associations that we have for these words. And these words would be anything from, um, from being a liar to being uh, a procrastinator to being hateful to being disrespectful, dishonest, or any of those words from yeah. A to Z. Sure. And so I took this book and I began to, and there was, there was a prayer card in the book that uh, when you recognize one of these word associations that you're practicing, that you believe is you, then meditate on it and then, and then it had a prayer card in it where you would say, where you would say um, Holy Spirit or you would say God or you would say uh, uh, universe please locate for me the origin of this belief and resolve it perfectly with oh. God's truth and love. And I began to do that as a Christian. Okay. And I'm, sit, I'm waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning and, I'm, and, I'm, and I would take five words a day. And I'd, I'd, I'd take the A through you know, B and I'd highlight the five words for the day and I would wake up early in the morning the house would still be asleep be dark and I would sit in my study and I would and I would resolve those A items and then the B items and then in about a month I all there began to be a change take place uh, how did you notice that from on the outer plane did you No, I became uh, well, uh, a friend of mine I had lunch with a fella that suggested um, a science of the mind uh, Booklet sure. that he happened to have in his car that he handed off to me. Yeah. And in the Science of the Mind booklet, they're talking about the Science of the Mind. Yeah. And also there was some uh, there was some discussion about the Kabbalah. Oh. And I began to sort of, you know, I couldn't tell. 
my Christian friends. I built my pastor's house right behind my house. Oh, I built the piano player's house next to his house, and I was a deacon in the church. So I didn't really talk to my friends that I was like looking into science of the mind. Yeah. And, and now I'm yep. interested in the Kabbalah. Yeah. And and I'm and I'm really and I joined this Kabbalah. You're getting to your mystical stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking out <laughs> mystical stuff, and and um, and I'm sort of just all of a sudden, the I'm just being free. You know, Bill I'm is just, getting freer. <laughs> Bill's getting freer. So I started, um, I started seeking. I started be, becoming a seeker, mm. and um, when I uh, when I started uh, looking at the Kabbalah. Uh, all, I'm, I'm going to online classes, and uh, my sister that I hadn't heard from in years calls me up on the phone. And, you know, first I get the booklets from this guy I had lunch with. Yeah. He's a subcontractor. Now my sister that I hadn't heard from in years calls me up on the phone. She goes, hey, Billy, this is fancy. Um, what are you doing? I said, fancy, you're not going to believe this. I love this. the name. Fancy? Yeah, fancy Sweet. free. Fancy, fancy free. free. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, so she asked me what I'm doing. I said, Fancy, you're not going to believe this. I'm reading the Kabbalah, or I'm studying the Kabbalah, and I'm reading the Science of the Mind. Yeah. And, and she goes, is, Billy, is, is, is this, this you? <laughs> oh, and, wow. and I said, yeah, I can't believe it. She said, oh, if you want to really uh, check something out that's, I mean, that will blow your mind, there's this guy named Gary Renard who wrote a book called The Disappearance of the Universe. Yeah. And he supposedly had these two ascended masters come into his living room and, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and so she told me about The Disappearance of the Universe. And she said, and there's this other, this other book called The Course in Miracles. <laughs> this woman named Helen Shuckman, yeah. uh, she's a professor. She supposedly had Jesus um, channel or give her yeah. like this book uh, called A Course in Miracles. And so... I got off the phone and I said, oh, wow, okay, cool. So I hung the phone up and that night I went to Barnes & Noble and I bought uh, The Disappearance of the Universe. Okay. Yeah. Took it home. And it's about 400 pages. I read it in four days. I couldn't sleep. I'm, I'm reading it and reading it. I'm going. Oh, my gosh. Because it, it has several hundred um, reinterpretations of Bible verses that are they they resonate with me they sound i'm going oh that's that's the that's truth that's what you've been wanting that's, to know that's the truth that's okay and i would turn the page and i go oh my god this is like now, this, that makes sense this makes sense this sure. makes sense and i would just go down and i was i was getting very excited about this uh, what i was learning and when i got to page uh about 95 i thought i've got to have this course in miracles so <laughs> I called the, I didn't know where you could get it. You couldn't yeah. get it at the Barnes and Noble. So I called the Foundation for Inner Peace yeah. in California and I ordered one. And Excellent. I said, I, I want it blue labeled. So I blue labeled it and I finished this book. And when I, by the time I finished this book, I'm going, oh my God, this is like, uh, this is opening up my whole world. Yeah. And the Course in Miracles came the day after I finished the disappearance of the universe. It came to my uh, to my mailbox, and I opened it up on my way to a, a project that I was working on. I opened it up to the manual for teachers, and it said, "You are a teacher of God." And I went, "Oh, that's right." And <laughs> and I it, I remember I was sitting at a red light when I opened it up. I was just real excited about opening up the package, yeah. and I said. I said again, I, I was talking to God. I said, whatever you want me to do, I'm in all yeah, the way. Yeah. And so that became my new spiritual path. Your new launching. Yeah, A Course in Miracles. It's, it's, a, it's, um, it's a foundation for a lot of us. I mean, it really is. It's a wonderful foundation it, to get that inner teacher and to hear that voice and to know you're guided and be open to it. And it's sweet. Yes. It is. That's the greater things than this ye shall do. Is uh, you can do that and more. Right. Now right. you said you were in Portugal. I was in Portugal. I don't want to yeah. leap you too far from there, but I want to make sure in this half hour, which goes like in five minutes, that I get you to your. To now, are you 
a course teacher or have you gone from the course to something that you resound to even more? Well, um, I, I would say that uh, I'm, not, I'm not that much of a course teacher. Okay. I am a teacher of God. Okay. I am a minister of God the way the course Jesus teaches us yeah. in the course. Yeah. I, am a, I am a teacher of God in that way yeah. Yeah. by demonstration. Yeah. And, um, and where the course has, has led me is to all kinds of other spiritual traditions. Yeah. All kinds of, because I also, you know, I follow... Um, Advaita. I love Advaita. I love yeah. Ramana Maharshi. I love uh, Papaji. And I, and I just uh, spent, I just got back from Portugal. I spent three, a little over three months with Muji. Yes, tell uh, us about Muji. Muji is an amazing um, s spiritual teacher. He is, yeah. he is totally, um, uh, he's totally amazing. He, in my perception, Muji is the Jesus Christ of today and the Moses because he's a great leader. He's a fearless leader. And I'm, I imagine Jesus uh, it was too. Yeah. Uh, sort of an activist, kind of he an activist type. He was fearless. I think of someone who's a, an activist. Well, I spent uh, three months with Muji and he, he just, he's always... Uh, he's also he's always living in the truth, yeah. and he points to the truth. Can we spell this name for our friends who are watching the show in case they wanted to try and find him? Um, Muji, M-O-O-J-I okay. dot org. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, all right. And he is an amazing teacher, and and uh, he'll be around for for many years, I think. He's yeah. we're, he's building an ashram in Portugal. Uh, it's called Manta Sahaja, uh -huh. and um, I lived with Muji and about forty-five other uh, um, other, well, really uh, spiritual seekers. Yeah, um, uh, I lived with them for about three months. What a privilege! Yeah, we have five minutes now. We got a. We got a. Now, are you into? This is where you feel. Did you find you met someone that you could really relate to more than anyone else so far on your journey? Well, <clears throat> I relate to uh, the the teacher within. Yes. I relate to Jesus. Is my he's my master. Okay. If he I'm still have, is. Muji's <laughs> a lot of of a lot of. Uh, beings masters he, he's a he's a master in a in an indian traditional okay. kind of a guru okay. sense he he's not my guru jesus would be my right. guru but the jesus that uh, that leads me uh quietly within and um uh what what really resonates with me and where i live is finding the the guide that we all have within which is the self yeah. living then that's what the, that's what today's title of the talk is is living in the self yeah. is a place where i uh, i've i found from the course in miracles uh, and also muji just brilliantly points the way to living that you are the self you are i'm i i'm actually what i've been seek, seeking yeah. not the garment called bill free not the not the um the vessel, yeah. but I have found myself, capital S self, I am as God created me. I am what I've been looking for. Yeah. Oh, that's beautifully said. Yes. I love that. I, I am. And, and so when I recognize what I am, now I can understand what Jesus meant when he says, the things that I do, you shall do yeah, and more. and more. Yeah. Because now... I'm seeing how we do that. We we actually don't. The garment steps out of the way, mm -hmm. and God plays me like an instrument. Yeah. He he I, he plays right through me. <laughs> yeah. As I step back. Oh, I love the way you said that. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, that's how I y yes. live my life now. Yeah. You're because you're aware. You're listening. I'm listening, and I see with you know I see with without the body's eyes. Yeah. I hear without the body's ears mm -hmm. because I, I see and I hear with spiritual vision. I hear, I see and I hear with, um, with an understanding yeah. that 
um, gets dropped in. Yeah, you know as, who you are. I know who I am, yeah. and and I know what I am, mm -hmm. and so I actually can, you know, I can I can live life in the joy that's described. That I never knew. How do we do that? How do we get to the joy? Yeah. How do we get to the peace that passes understanding? Yeah. In two minutes, let's give our audience, our, our viewers, um, some suggestions on that. Um, because you've just spoke the truth, which is knowledge about who you are. You've really found who you are, and you've got your guidance. And I guess as a teacher, or we're both teachers, we're all students and teachers, we want to encourage our friends to find that as well, no matter what the avenue. Right, right. Well, um, for, for me, um, it's, it's really, it's, it starts with being completely honest with my feelings. Ah, oh, thank you. Ooh, that Com is so true. Right. It's com and, but also recognizing um, uh, that when you, when you have the feelings, when you have the idea that, um, uh, that you... Uh, that you want to live a, a more full life, or you want to you want to get to know the divine within. You want to have a relationship with the self, so that you can walk in the self. F for me, the the key to that is to just is to go within and just ask for help and say, uh, God, Spirit, Divine. I mean, you can ask for whoever your your higher self. Yeah. Whatever you do with that will answer. Thank you. And I hate to stop you, but thank you. That was beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, my friends, for joining us on Awaken the Dream. We will talk to you again soon.